This hack tip is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down the concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Darren Kitchen, and today we're following up on our discussion of 802.11 frames with an investigation of beacons and a practical example of using Backtrack Linux and a technique known as raw frame injection. Now, as you recall from last time, the beacon frame is just one of the four types of management frames, the other three being association, authentication, and probes, and we're going to be getting into those more shortly. But now, the beacon frame is kind of a special kind of management frame in that it contains information about the network, which brings us to the terms. Beacon frames, or simply beacons, are transmitted periodically by base stations or access points to announce the presence of wireless networks. And the beacon frame is made up of several parts, including whether or not the station is in ad hoc or infrastructure mode, which we also know to be known as managed mode, uh, the SSID name, and we're going to be getting into service sets of 802.11 networks more, but for right now, SSID is a 32 character, typically human readable string that uniquely identifies the network. It also contains the timestamp, which is quite simply a unit of time by which all of the associated stations will go ahead and synchronize to. It's kind of like the scene in the movie where all the spies synchronize their watches, except that it happens in hex, in the blink of an eye. Anyway, it also contains capability information, such as the channel that the access point is operating on, as well as the supported data rates, if it's you know, 11, 54, whatever that may be, as well as, uh, you know, typically these access points, they, they broadcast their beacons usually every 10 seconds, which can kind of add quite a bit of overhead. So to improve network performance on uh, networks where there's not a whole lot of clients connecting and disconnecting, say like a home network, often this setting is changed to be much higher value. Now in just a bit, we're going to be putting together a practical example in Backtrack Linux, but first, let's take a quick break. Squarespace is the fastest and easiest way to create a high-quality website. They offer 24-7 support and over 60 professionally designed templates and a sweet iOS app. Check out squarespace.com for a two-week free trial and get 10% off when you sign up in July with coupon code HAK57. MDK3. It's a tool that exploits weaknesses in 802.11 protocols and it's created by ASPJ with the help of the Aircrack NG team and their libraries. Now, MDK3 can be found at Pedro Larig's homepage, and it's also built into the latest version of Backtrack from BacktrackLinux.org. Now, today we're using MDK3 in our practical example of transmitting and analyzing beacon frames. So, to achieve this, we'll first need a card capable of raw frame injection. In order to test our card, uh, whether it has those capabilities, we're going to use AirPlay, which is part of the Aircrack NG suite. Of course, I'm using my trusty Realtek 8187 here. Now, AirPlay NG is a tool for injecting wireless frames and can accomplish 10 basic Wi-Fi attacks, including deauthentication, fake authentication, fragmentation, and so much more. And while we'll be getting more in depth with that tool a little later on, right now we're just going to be focusing on mode number nine, also known as test mode. Now, of course, before we can use either AirPlay NG or MDK3, we're going to need to bring up our uh, interface here in monitor mode. And if you recall from a previous episode, the easiest way to do that is to go ahead and issue the command airmon ng start and then our interface name. So airmon ng start wlan2 in my instance. And there we go. Now our card has been set to monitor mode and we actually have the interface mon0 so we can proceed to test our NIC. Issuing AirPlay NG TAC9 or TAC TAC test and our wireless interface, and in this case it's going to be MON0, we can test to see whether or not our radio can handle raw frame injection. So AirPlay TAC NG TAC9 MON0, and it's going ahead and trying, and there we go. It says injection is working. Our test is complete. So now we can actually go ahead and use the MDK3 tool which is capable of performing many modes of attacks. Issuing MDK3 at the command prompt is going to go ahead and display a brief description of all of them. So here, here let's do that again with some more. Oh, hey, check that out. Wonderful. We could also do MDK3 tac tac full help to get a complete list of all of the modes and all of the details within those modes that it supports. But today we're focusing on the beacon, float, uh, beacon flood mode. So for more information on any mode, we'd type MDK3 
tac tac health and then the letter associated with that mode. So for this case, it's going to be B. And there we go, we see all of the options here. So now finally we can craft our beacon flood. And we can see here that the options tac F will read SSIDs from a text file. TAC G will show that they're using the 802.11G protocol at 54 megabits per second. TAC A will show them as having WPA enabled with the AES encryption, and TAC C will let us specify the channel. Thankfully, I already have a text file full of SSIDs handy because I was just on TACzilla. So let's go ahead and issue MDK3, MON0, B, TAC F, SSID.list, and then tac G, tac A, and we're gonna put it on channel 11, so tac C11. Now, as you can see, MDK3 is transmitting hundreds of beacons on channel 11 for the access points that I've specified. Now, we could verify that these are actually wireless interfaces by going ahead and scanning our nearby networks with our other wireless interface. I'm gonna go over here, because I have, if config WLAN0, have another wireless interface here to use. So I'm gonna do IW list. WLAN 0, scan, and pipe that to grep and look for ESSID. And there we go, I have plenty. Now, similar to fuzzing, this sort of attack can sometimes break Wi-Fi scanners or network interface devices. And with a specifically crafted SSID list, I'm sure you can come up with your own so it's a fun or mischief. Now, mind you that all of these BSSIDs and MAC addresses are kind of randomly generated, so there's no chance of anybody actually associating with these base stations, at least not now. Now, we're gonna take another look at this tool when we start to have fun with something known as evil twins, but for now, suffice it to say, we've successfully transmitted our own beacons. Now, next time, we're gonna capture one of these bad boys and analyze the frame with another fun tool. But until then, it's time for the giveaway. Last week I asked what numbered flag in AirPlay NG will send a deauthentication frame? And the answer is TAC0 or simply TAC TAC deauth. This week what I'd like to know is from what movie does the tool MDK3 get its name? Bonus view, tell me what the name is. Anyway, answer in the comments to be randomly selected to receive the radio that I use here on Hacktip. And as always, we value your feedback and your suggestions. If you have a tip to share with me, go ahead and email tips at hack5.org. And be sure to check out our sister show, Hack 5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your Technolust. Wanna buy a duck?